Hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, it's a privilege uh, to share this devotional message with you. Uh, last time in our devotion, I said uh, that let's make July to be a month that we focus on our faith and building our, uh, our faith and all, all those uh, things. Oh, we, we, talked, we talked about that last time. And um, today, what I'm going to share with you is going to be on the same line, building your faith. And one of the things when I was reading the Bible in the book of Psalms, you know, Psalms has so many wonderful things uh, uh, about praising God. And, and there are also some historical factors written in the book of Psalms, like the book of Psalm 103, where you see, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget now all his benefits. And, it, and then after seeing that, you know, he started praising God and blessing the Lord. But, you know, one of the things when you bless, your faith is strengthened. When you praise God for all the benefits, you know, the forgiveness of sin, the healing that he has given you, and the many countless blessings that he bestowed upon your life. When you just remember all those things and start to bless the Lord, of course your faith increases. Then as you read in Psalm 103, uh, down to verse 7, he said, He made known his ways to Moses. His act is to the children of Israel, you see? God made known his ways and his acts or his deeds to the children of Israel. Now, this is, this is very amazing when you know the way and when you know the act of God. And the higher level is knowing his way, how he works. And the act is because the children of Israel saw the acts of God and they didn't know the way they fail to praise God, then they fall into complain and murmur, and, and they say, will God do this for us? Will he prepare food? Will he, you know, uh, they forget all the, the, what he did in the past. And also, uh, we'll share last time, when we know only the deeds, not the way, we'll be in trouble. Remember the disciples of Jesus, when he told them about the leavens, when he told them, uh, be careful of the leavens of the Pharisees, they start to think about, forget all the actors, you know, because actors can be, can be forgotten. And they forgot the actors of that miracle of multiplying the two fish and the five loaves and, and how many multitudes of people uh, were fed. And they were worried about food, about bread. He was, but he was talking about the level means the teaching of the Pharisees, a teaching that does not produce faith in the hearers. If it does not produce faith, it might give you a religion, uh, a sense of like good feeling, but no faith at all. You don't uh, have faith in you to trust God for his promises. So God takes his ways. And so that's what we need to focus. But if we read, uh, I believe it will bless you. Let me read a little bit more. And I'll talk more about that. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abandoned in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. You see, he did not come and punish us and he forgave, uh, I mean, forgives, of course, all our sins every time we repent and wash us by the blood of Jesus and make us new for us, the heavens and the are high above the earth. So great is his mercy toward us, those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. And then, you know, when you know the way, I mean, David knowing the way of God, speaking uh, or um, this psalm, talking about God and sharing, when you know the way, you teach others how the act is going to happen. If we don't know the way, then we can talk about the act, you know, or it will be a forgotten thing or like we take it as for granted or a lucky uh, opportunity, something happened, uh, but not explained. And let me say this to you. Jesus himself said that he is the way. In John 14, he said, I am the way, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through me. You see, knowing the way, knowing Christ, that's the secret. And Moses, of course, in other places, Jesus said to the, to the Pharisees, you search or read the law of Moses and as if that you find something, but he said, Moses wrote about me. And John chapter 5, you see, Jesus, I mean, Moses himself explained Christ and a mystery. And a, a, and a mystery, like uh, when he brought the manna from above. It's a symbolic of Christ, the body of Christ. He said, I am the bread of life. And he, figuratively, Moses wrote a lot of things about Christ. Not only this, you can go uh, and see you know, the story of Abraham when he sacrificed instead of his own son and the only son or the promised son and how God prepared the lamb. You see, Moses spoke about dramatical, in a dramatical way, somehow, not revealing, but in, in showing us in, in such a way, in, in many of his writing, the, the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and even Genesis, the first book of the Bible, it talks about you'll find Christ if you search there. And that's all the message is about God, about Christ, about the Holy Spirit. These books will help us to know. Now, you, when you know the way of God, and the way God works it through faith, you know that. And, the, and of course, in, I mean, because that's why the Bible talks about a lot about faith. And the purpose of reading the Bible, Romans chapter 10, verse 7, it says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the word of God, or the word of Christ. So when you hear the word of Christ, you get faith. You know the way. Faith is the way. In Hebrew chapter 12, I, I want to take you there in Hebrew chapter 12. This is what it, it said about Christ because, you know, faith is not something that you produce. It's, it's a gift itself. And, and, and it comes when we hear. We can't say that I will have faith without hearing God's word and promise. That's a fake faith. It won't take us anywhere. It does not hold water. When trouble and problem comes in, and that shows that the person has only a kind of confession without solid foundation. In Hebrew chapter 12, it says, therefore, we also strive. We are surrounded by so great clouds of witnesses. This are, it talks about in chapter 11, all the great faith people. And then it says, let us lay aside every weight and sin, which so easily in, ensnare us, and let us run with endurance, the race that is uh, set before us, looking unto Jesus. Now, you know, just removing all those sins, repenting and, and turn away from sin, and you run the rest, following Christ. And then it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one who started our faith, and he's going to be the one who will finish it. And he said he is for who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down on the right hand of the Father, on the right hand of the throne of God. So Christ has suffered, and he, he uh, endured the pain, uh, and, but now he's in glory. He's uh, at the right hand of the Father. As sitting on his throne, hallelujah. And, and now it says, now, let our, our, our eyes be fixed on him, on Christ. And, and that's how faith comes. When you look at Christ, when you fix your eyes on him, you get faith. You remember when Peter, uh, when Jesus walked on the water and, and Peter and the other disciples were on the boat and they were scared. They thought that he was a ghost. And, but uh, when Peter noticed that it was Christ and he said, don't fear. And then Peter want to be like more like Jesus. And, and he asked if you are the one, command me to walk on the water. So Peter didn't have faith to walk on the water until Jesus spoke the word, come. And then he stepped out of the boat and he started to walk. Amazing. He never did that. He never had that kind of experience. He walked and relaxing on the water until he take off his eyes and look on the stormy sea. And that was the time he started to be, he started to get scared. And then the more his eyes is away from Christ and focus on what is happening in his natural um, ability, and now the supernatural ability starts to uh, uh, decline or decrease. And then he started to sink. That's where he just looked again, Jesus saved me. And then he pulled him out and he said, why you're fearful, why you're a fret. And he took him back to the book, you know? So we should focus on Christ. That's the way, the way, focusing on him, the way not focusing on the problem. 
back in um, in um, uh, you know a few years ago. It's not really a few years ago, of course, many years ago. I was teaching on on healing in our church, uh, and and a lady uh, came uh, who uh, at that time she was very young, not married, and I didn't know, but she uh, came and become a member in our church and start to follow, you know, every meeting and in those days, especially on the healing area, she had a big interest and she was listening attentively and following. And what happened, you know, I, I knew the story later on, you know, because I didn't know what's going on in her heart. You know, you, when, when the word comes, it, it, ju it just uh, does amazing things. And of course, there were many times she, I remember that she came forward for the healing prayer and and uh, and I prayed for her, and, and I prayed for her, but I didn't know what happened to her until a few years later. Uh, but before I talk to you about the story of this this uh, young uh, woman, a uh, precious uh, uh, woman who had a great faith, uh, let me read one more scripture from the book of James because I was talking about healing now. In the book of James, chapter five. Uh, in the book of James, chapter 5, verse um, 13, if, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Let him sing a song. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, let me just stop here, you know, and I'll go back into that story. And when, when you are, you know, this is now the way, you, we learn one way. When somebody gets sick in the church, actually in, in those days, he didn't say, okay, let him go to the hospital immediately. No, it doesn't say that. Let him call the elders and let, him, let them anoint him with oil and pray for him. And then it says, it's not the oil that heals us. Of course, we do it and we do it. And that, it says the prayer of faith. See now, faith comes by hearing. Probably when the elders come, they talk about the healing power of God. They talk about what Jesus did. They talk about uh, by his stripes we were healed. They take the promises. They shall lay their hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. And then after staring up faith in the sick person and they agreed with him for the healing and pray for him, a miracle happened. That's how God works. Well, he also heals you when you pray by yourself. But there are times that in case you pray, then nothing happens. And I believe it happens, but if then, call the elders. This is the way, the way God works. And, and then, you, then they pray and something happens. So this is the kind of situation that this um, girl, that time, um, young girl, uh, a single and not yet married, and she came and prayed for and received the prayers, but something going on in her heart. And then later on, uh, this girl, got married uh, to one of our church members. And then a year later, um, they had their first child. And when she gave, gave birth to her first child, the doctor said that the child which, who, who was born uh, was HIV, that time was rampant, was negative. But the mom is positive. And they uh, checked the husband, and he's also negative. And they were surprised, because usually, if the woman hasn't. And, and then, amazingly, uh, his family uh, approached me, and they were so scared. And they said uh, to me, uh, well, they should uh, you know, separate, because uh, she had this, and she didn't tell him. And uh, when they get married, knowing that, she hid the, the story. And so I, I called this, this mom. Now she's a mom. I asked her why she did not tell her husband and how they just, you know, without explaining that she got married. But she said to me, that shocked me. She said to me, I believe I am healed. Didn't you teach us that? By his traps we were healed. And it's, it's, she was like saying, what kind of question you're asking me? I'm healed. 
So I was saying, oh, I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry. You are healed. You are healed and forever. I just said that to her, and she stood in that ground. 18 years later, she added other children. I think three, maybe they've come four, maybe. And, and I met her still beaming, radiant, happy, healthy, all the family blessed. You know, that's the kind of faith, you know, the order and the finisher of our faith. She stood in that ground and she bit that sickness, that death, who, which took many lives early, but she bit them. She bit that devil, that demon of sickness and lived all her life healthy. And I believe that she would live longer, healthier and more years. And, and see her children married and, and, and see her, you know, until uh, if Jesus dies, uh, she will see great things. But I'm telling you that she already had seen great things now, almost, uh, almost now. And that was over 20 something years, you know. So what I'm saying today is the way God works is through his word. The way he works is through prayer. The way he works it's through faith, you know? That's why he showed his way to Moses. But the children of Israel, they complain to Moses. They come to him because they know only the actors of God. So not just only, you know, the way, the, the healing, like God, you've been prayed for and you got healed. If that's, if that's the only thing that you know, that's not true. That's not good. You should know the way. How does it happen? And also Christ is the way and knowing him in a deeper way. That makes the big big difference hallelujah there are things that brings faith like hearing the word of god and and there are things that bring grace by by grace we've been saved through faith so grace comes when we have faith and both are a gift and then another one is that uh the saving faith comes when you hear about salvation the healing comes when you hear about healing you'll be feeling the holy spirit when you hear about the holy spirit and how that works you should know the way and then, of course, uh, in James uh, 4, verse 6, it says, God gives grace to the humble. So that's the way. How do I get grace? If you ask me the way, yeah, being humble. What does it mean, humble? A humble person can face his sin, and he kneels down and asks God for strength, for protection. That's just being humble. There are people who say, oh, no, I'm not going to pray to God. You know, I, I can do it by myself. Yes, of course, there are things that you can do, but it's because God gave you the strength, the wisdom. The humble says, and give glory to God. And he says, oh, well, God's grace, God's mercy, all that I have is a gift from him. So giving back the glory to God is just showing your humility. That's how God works. May God show you his way more and more so that you may see repeated acts of God, repeated miracles, repeated provisions, Repeat it. I mean, you know, if we don't see it again, like if we just talk about, oh, a long time God healed, but not now, then we turn it from knowing the way into the actors. But when you know the way, God still works afresh. You know, Joshua knows the way, as Moses did. That's why he, uh, the Jordan River, you know, uh, stopped and they walked on a dry land as they crossed the Red Sea, and they had done that one because he knows the way, so he can repeat the miracle, and the actors. Well, this week, friend, let's just focus on the ways of God and learn more on his ways and see his actors more in our life. If you have not met Jesus, the way himself, the Lord of your life, let this be the day that you accept him into your heart and, and make him the Lord of your life. And he will come into you and change you. And I I believe that there's more blessing comes to you. If you are sick today, we're going to agree with you. I will agree with you. There's no distance in the spirit. It's like you're inviting me into your house, and I'll pray for you. If you have not met Jesus, as I say, just pray this prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying for my sins on the cross. You are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I believe that he has come to your life. If you are sick, lay your hands on that sick body. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I agree with my brother. I agree with my sister. 
let the every deadly sickness be removed from the, her body or his body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are a healer of blood. You are a healer of our blood. And every part of our being, our organs, our tissues, our muscles, our skin, Lord, in the name of Jesus, our nervous system, in the name of Jesus. Every person that is he hearing this message, hearing my voice, be healed in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every sickness, every disease, every demonic attack to be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, bless the children, the family, bring provisions and restoration. Every work, everything that they touch, be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for, um, uh, you know, uh, following and, and hearing this prayer. And thank you for supporting uh, also my ministry uh, in your prayers and your finances. May the Lord continue to bless you and keep on doing it. And I believe more blessings are coming. May the Lord give you more understanding on the way of God. Amen. God bless you.